Uh, congratulations on getting the funding. Um, what did you make of Dr. Fauci's uh, um, comments? Well, we, we are in the business of R&D and we learn from experiments. And so we will do the experiments to find out how many doses are needed to have uh, long-term protection. Our, we're, we're in a clinical trial right now where we're dosing uh, people with one dose and then uh, followed up by another boosting dose. And we'll measure the, the uh, ability to protect long-term. That's all you can do. Look at your data. Stan, is an antibody response enough? And, and is there a kind of uh, a line in the sand that you're getting an idea of in terms of that antibody response, in terms of providing protection? Yeah, so that's a great question. So our, we, we have taken the tactic of having a, a, a vaccine that has a recombinant protein that we make at large scale. And that protein itself is, has the ability to stimulate antibody responses uh, that should be protective. But we also uh, mix it with an adjuvant, and the, and the purpose of the adjuvant is to boost that immune response to the antigen and to boost a T cell response, so cell-mediated -me immunity. So our vaccine has both, and we think both components are important. Do you think that a world where we get like a one-shot-and-done thing, like measles, is actually realistic? And can you give me perspective on kind of timing then for sort of multi-shot versus one-shot deal? Yeah, I, I think the data are looking so far that they would have uh, in our trials, we're trying out one dose of day, day zero, and we're following that up with a dose of day 21. I think that for our vaccine, it could be a standard dose. Others are taking approaches where they're trying just one dose. And there's, there, there are several different main um, uh, approaches to a vaccine. We're all targeting, interestingly, we're all targeting the same protein. It's called a spike protein. And it's a protein on the surface of the virus that has to bind to your human respiratory cells. And if you make antibodies to that spike protein, then you block it from being able to uh, get into your respiratory cells and cause, cause illness. And there are, the, there are several different ways. There are three main ways that we're making this uh, protein. Uh, one where it's inside of a, of a viral vector that's, that's uh, been killed so it doesn't infect you. Uh, another one is to make mRNA that encodes the same spike protein. And ours is, is, I guess, the more proven traditional way. It sounds old, but it's not. Uh, but it's, it's to actually make the protein itself. It forms a nanoparticle, which is, which is really immunogenic and is seen by the immune system as something they want to put antibodies on. And so, so those three different ways of making that protein could result in three different immune responses some more potent, some less, uh, and and uh, the data will the data will show us, and, and not very long. We're all racing as fast as we possibly can. We're in phase one trials. We're get data by the end of this month, and those phase one trials should turn into phase two trials in August, and by sometime in the fall, we should have some evidence because we're going to do this in multiple countries. We should have some evidence that our vaccine is is uh, st uh, stimulating a. a uh, an immune response that protects and is safe. Dr. Fauci also talked the other day about the fact that we are starting to see mutations in the virus. Um, would that affect the spike that you're talking about? If that were to mutate, how problematic would that be for your efforts? We've looked at it, and so far uh, we're in the clear. So, um, and that's what you—that's why you want to have a vaccine like ours, which which has a full-length protein, stimulates antibodies to many parts of the protein, and has an adjuvant that, that broadens the response. So, so so far we're we're okay. Um, there's a lot of vaccine under development out there, obviously from many different companies. Um, how is it to get test patients to try the vaccine? I mean, is it easy? Do you have to compete with other companies? What do you do with that? Well, it's, it's a question that's increasingly asked because it's not hard to do a phase one study. I mean, we had 130 people and we had them in one day. Um, it's it's uh, as you get into trials with 30,000 people, we can do that as well. There's lots of people who would love to have an experimental coronavirus vaccine. If you get into trials with three or four trials with 30,000 people, you might bump into one another. And so that has to be worked out. There's certainly plenty of trial sites. 
there's certainly no shortage of people who would love to try a coronavirus vaccine. So uh, that, that can be sorted out. Um, how's it going to work in different regions around the world, Stan? Um, you are now part of, of the Warp Speed program in the United States. Does the U.S. get it first? Can you manufacture only in the United States? Does that pose risks? Do you need to have multiple nodes uh, in terms of your manufacturing process? Uh, and again, therefore, and then does that lead you on in terms of problems of, of distribution? No, I'm glad you asked the question because we've, we've addressed that problem early. We have, uh, we've invested in global production. We've been aided by this group, CEPI, which is the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness, who has given us a funding of $380 million. We have just bought a, a facility in the Czech Republic that has the capability of making a billion doses of, of product. We're, we're uh, now uh, turning on uh, plants in another country in Europe and in Asia and in India. So we're gonna have a global manufacturing capacity, both for our antigen, the spike protein, and for matrix, which is the adjuvant that, that's important. And the, and the goal is, is that if borders close in one area or another, uh, we will still be a global producer. So I, I think that's a strategy that's really important in a pandemic. Well, you are a U.S. company, and you did get $1.6 billion from the U.S. So were there any strings attached, like you have to distribute it here first? Well, it, it, part, of the, part of our obligation are to make, to get these plants up and running and to make 100 million doses uh, that can be deliverable starting in the fourth quarter, hopefully finished by January or February of next year. And uh, so those will be for the U.S. Beyond that is not uh, been determined, uh, but there's clearly going to have to be more procurement by the U.S. government, and hopefully we can have capacity to supply the entire U.S. population and, and perhaps others so that we can ship outside of the United States. And, and as I say, we're backed up by capacity in, in Asia and Europe and India. So uh, we'll be able to ship anywhere.